Hello, and welcome to Reviews on the Desk. Why on the desk? Well, just cause. My god, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos. Come to think of it, it's been a while since I've done a video in general. Um, just to give you the shorthand of it, I've been doing exams, lots of work, some charity work, all kinds of stuff like that. So it's been a bit hectic. But, not wasting any more time, let's get on to the review. So, today I'm going to be taking a look at this. This is a Game Boy Advance, as it says right across the front there. Game Boy Advance. And this is a handheld console that came out uh, in about 2001, I think. Sometime mid-2001, just before the GameCube came out. And revolutionised the market by being a console. And uh, that's a lie. It didn't revolution revolutionise the market. It actually sold pretty poorly, the GameCube. But this didn't. This sold about 80 million units. Off the top of my head. Something like that. And it's easy to see why. I mean, it's a sequel to the ever-popular Game Boy. Now, this is supposed to fix all the flaws of the Game Boy. Because it has all kinds of new features. And that's not supposed to happen. Me whacking it like that. As you can see on the back, it's got all kinds of stuff. You've got your cartridge slot in the top. You've got a um, K input for some kind of cable. Probably a link cable. Um, shoulder buttons on the top. Again, clicky things. A and B button on the front. Start and select. And your D-pad, which um, feels alright. Feels quite nice. Not too spongy, but... Again, it's one of these older D-pads which kind of seems to float inside its housing. Interesting thing to note, if you take the GameCube controller, this is mine, you'll notice that the D-pads are exactly the same. So that's a good way that they cut down on the cost of manufacturing these things. Um, but they also cut down on the cost of manufacturing this in other ways which are a bit annoying, as we shall see later. Um, power switch on the bottom, you've got your volume slider here, headphone jack, don't see many of those anymore, um, and yeah, battery cover which comes off. It's one of the flimsiest battery covers I've ever seen, but it does the job fine. So, uh, let's turn this thing on and see how it fares. You have your startup. So you'll notice it only has one speaker, so it's a mono sound instead of the stereo that we're so used to now with the DS and all that. Um, but it does quite well. I mean, the image quality is pretty good. It's like playing on a portable um, Sega Mega Drive or Super Nintendo. One of those kind of things. I actually don't know if this thing was capable of 3D, though because the Super Nintendo did have the FX chip which enabled it to play 3D games like Star Fox and it had the Mode 7 or whatever so that you could see in kind of a 3D environment like in F-Zero games like that um, but that's just the startup. One thing that's interesting to note is when you turn it off it kind of fades away slowly I don't know why that is but it's probably something to do with the ink. But enough about talking about this thing. Let's get on to one of the games. This one. Let's change the camera angle. This is Pokemon Ruby version. And this is what your average GBA box would have looked like. I mean, it's nice, but again, it's just a box. Why didn't they change the cases? I mean, most companies were doing that by this point, I think. Well, yeah, the odd exception, but again, a box would would be very nice, but a case even nicer. So let's take a look inside the case. Here's the game cartridge. That's your typical cartridge for the GBA, except this one is transparent red of some kind. Let's grab another one for comparison. This is Super Mario Brothers three. Um, yeah, they look very good. 
I think. They're a little bit bigger than the DS cartridges, much thicker. Um, let's compare it to an original Game Boy cartridge. The reduction in size is quite astounding. It's amazing how over the years all these cartridges get smaller and smaller. I mean, the Switch cartridge is minuscule in comparison to this. But anyway, that's the cartridges box again. I don't have the little white in innards that come with it, but you know, most people throw them away. Um, trainer's guide, don't need that, that's a manual of some kind. But let's go play one of the games and we can start discussing how this thing actually plays and the graphics. Got the startup sequence. Your classic Game Boy startup sequence. Game Boy Player, which, I mean, one of these days I might review, but. I mean, it's quite tricky to get a hold of. So the sound's pretty good, sound's quality is nice, but I think one of the things you can notice almost immediately... Shut up, Mario. I think one of the things you can notice almost immediately is that you can barely see the screen in certain light conditions. I mean, if I cover it like that, you can barely see the screen, and that's because this thing has no backlight to it or front light at all. This thing, to cut down on costs, they just didn't include it. Which I don't know why, because, I mean, the Game Boy Light had been released just a few years prior to this, so... I really don't understand what they were trying to go for with this. So, the graphics are good, very reminiscent of the 16-bit consoles. Let's see how this thing plays. The D-pad, yeah, it feels much nicer for games like this. I mean, I am sliding about a bit, but I am on ice. This game, and you can see me in the reflection. One of the methods to try light up the screen of this thing was using all kinds of light fixtures, and as you can see, I'm failing miserably at this game. But, yeah, one of the things they would do is release attachments which you could attach to the top and it would focus the light onto the screen but in the end it just kind of created more glare than it did light. Playing this through the camera is ne nearly impossible so please excuse my awful attempts to play Super Mario Bros. 3. But at the end of the day, Super Mario Bros. 3, it's an excellent game, and I'm very glad they released it for this system, actually. And I'm dead again, and I think we'll stop there. So, let's take the cartridges out. They, all, they don't come out very easily. you kind of got to get your fingernails under it, and that's why the labels and a lot of these things peel off over time. Or you could just have one of the fake ones. And when I say one of the fake ones, there were millions of these things, absolutely millions of fake games made for the GBA for some reason. All come out of China and Korea and all those countries who wanted to cash in on it. And it's very annoying if you're a collector because more often than not you'll go buy a game only to find out that it's a complete fake. But we're not finished with the GBA yet. Because, remember I showed you the Game Boy cartridge? This is Super Mario Land, came out in about 89, sometime like that. It was one of the launch titles for the original Game Boy. And it will actually work in your Game Boy Advance, which is pretty cool. Get the classic startup sequence with that. Um, and, yeah, you just go around as Mario and jump about and collect mushrooms, do all the stuff you normally do. Super Mario Land is, unlike many of the main Super Mario titles, particularly if you've only grown up on some of the current portable games like New Super Mario Bros., which is one of my favourite games for the DS. But, yeah, as you can see, I'm not doing so well through the viewfinder, and I'm dead again. But you get the gist of it. And the good thing is, 
it's in colour, which is even better. And some of the games, I think, particularly the Game Boy Colour games, work excellently on this thing. So, not really many gripes about it, other than, as you can see if I angle it correctly, uh, the screen, yeah, it's a bit scratch, you can probably see there, there we go. Uh, a whole load of scratches all over this screen, but that's not too difficult, that's just an easy fix. Um, it's good that it has the normal headphone input. Um, but the biggest issue by far is the backlight, which is non-existent. But you can modify it so it does indeed include a backlight or a front light. And this screen is, again, easily replaceable. So that about does it for the original GBA. But they then released the SP version, which I do not have on me because I do not own it. Um, there should be a picture of one coming up now. The SP, I've used it before, it's alright, I mean it's a bit smaller than the regular GBA and I think just is a bit crappy in some way, but it does have the front light and there are a few versions with the back light to it. Unfortunately though they get rid of the headphone input and replace it with this proprietary thing which is absolute garbage and you've got to get an adapter for and also there's no replaceable batteries so yeah you need to go buy the charger and also the battery life is much shorter on it on the GBASP whereas with this thing you can get probably 12-13 hours out of this I mean that's just a rough estimate from how much I've played oh well so what do I think of it in the end? Very good, very good. And I'm glad that Nintendo are continuing to make excellent handheld consoles. And the DS would only come out in 2004, so that was three years after this thing. And their main, their main marketing thing was that, oh, this, the DS will not replace the Game Boy Advance. It will continue to have this thing. This will be our main console. The Game Boy line will persevere. And of course we know it didn't and it died off and was replaced by the DS line. But this thing I think is much more robust than the DS which breaks much easier than this. So um, if, you ever, if you ever want to collect retro consoles this might be a good starting point. So, yeah, I think that's about all for the Game Boy Advance. So, sorry for the lack of uploads recently. Been a bit hectic. But it's nice to be back on track doing these kind of things. And so hopefully I'll do a few more of these in the future. In this kind of very unscripted style. And you can probably tell. Might have been rambling a bit. But, um, overall... Just glad to be back. I'll catch all of you later. Thanks for supporting the channel. Make sure to subscribe as well. And I'll see you all later.